Perfect. Good morning, Brian. Great to be here, Trav. What a week it's been for crypto. Quite a rebound, huh? Quite a rebound. Thinking back to our last conversation, and, and it was almost the polar opposite. Uh, fear was rampant. Uh, so much red. <laughs> like looking at the uh, the dashboard in on Sandbase, every single block of every single asset was was red. And now it's almost the opposite. So it's it's been it's been quite refreshing this last week. How um, how's it been on your end? Yeah, I mean, we were just a week ago talking about when the bottom would hit and how bad it would need to be in order for us to really start to see a recovery. Um, and then all of a sudden we get some shocking news over the weekend with, uh, you know, presidential candidate Trump uh, potentially getting uh, assassinated, missing by a hair from a very historical event. I mean, look, it's st still a historical event, but, uh, you know, you would think that it's kind of just, you know, something that would be not a major factor in crypto. And it turned out to to be one from the evidence that we saw. And we'll show it in, in a few minutes here. But I wanted to, to kind of use this news event as a reminder of how speculation can really impact the markets and when there is something like an attempted assassination whether it actually you know comes to fruition or it's just an attempt um, obviously we don't get into politics so there's no bias in terms of who santiman wants to be president or or you know so on and so forth we're a global company and i'm actually one of the few people from the us on the team but we do have data that shows that the crypto community seems to be uh, slightly favorable toward one candidate. And that's Trump, the, the man who very nearly was killed on Saturday. Um, and with that, with the news that he survived and arguably survived in a very, uh, I guess I would call it triumphant storybook way with his hand up in the air and, you know, showing strength to the people that that ended up being a very pro Trump uh, event, whether you are a Biden or Trump supporter. Uh, I think most people are looking at that now and just going, this is this is going to push Trump further uh, toward his his quest to return to presidency in 2024. Um, you may believe that or may not, but the point is the crypto community believes it, uh, according to the data. And when that happens, um, if it's the candidate that the crypto community had already favored as the better candidate to make crypto prices go up, then their reaction to something positive happening, such as the candidate they wanted surviving an assassination, that's going to make the prices of crypto go up, right? So in a roundabout way, all I'm trying to say is the crypto community perceived what happened on Saturday Saturday, to be good in terms of uh, improving the probability of Trump being president. Therefore, markets immediately reacted. Uh, Bitcoin went up like 3% in the next 12-ish hours after the event. Trump coin, as you'd imagine, just skyrocketed like up 70% within the first few hours. Um, and the momentum really hasn't stopped. It's kind of like all it took was one domino. And this was something that nobody could have anticipated. Uh, and once it happened, we saw kind of a temporary spike in markets. And that was enough to get whales and sharks and uh, kind of the bull train back on track, at least for now. Uh, so we can look into some of the data here and understand how much of that is is really going to be lasting versus, you know, a bit of a fluke over these past three to four days. What do you think about it all about all of it from your end? Oh, I'm absolutely fascinated. Once again, it's uh, it never fails to blow my mind the the tight knit nature between human psychology and price action. I mean, it's one and the same if you think about it here. Um, and I think it's pretty incredible as well that um, events like this can be so um, without going into any sort of conspiracy, just stating facts that events like this can be so closely timed with areas on a chart. Like the fact that this happened right at the lowest that we've seen Bitcoin in many months 
is it's almost like it's the, the timing couldn't have been better here. Um, going back to the, the Trump specific conversation here, I know he uh, has publicly spoken highly about how how bullish he is on crypto, um, and I know he's been taking part or he plans on taking part in in several cryptocurrency conferences as well. And then there was also the the recent catalyst of about his his tr um, criminal trial being dismissed as well. So so many different scenarios coming in to really get, you know help maximize this this bounce off the bottom. And again, with you, I'm very curious to kind of see the data behind this um, and evaluate the sustainability of this move. Um, I think that's going to be something personally I know for sure I want to see, and then also my my community here would love to see that as well. Um, and before we jump into that, I see you've kind of got things queued up and ready to go. I just wanted to kind of um, introduce our agenda for today, and yep. uh, then we can just dive right in here. So first things first, that's, I think it's very important that we dive through the analytics and the on-chain data behind this current move. Um, that's um, that's first and foremost. But then secondly, we're our plan today is to use the Sandbase platform to try to find several tickers and to actually create positions on the San R application here as well, come back in about a week of time or so and, and see how it goes. And together, you know, try and come up with a, a couple of different strategies on how to maximize the data at our fingertips on the San base application here. Do you have anything else to add or any other thoughts on any of that there, Brian? No, your, your thoughts were spot on. And I think you summed up what we want to do in the next 20 to 25 minutes well here. Uh, we can look at some data and then finish off by doing some actual mock trades on your San R account and, and kind of show why you're making a few of the predictions that you are. Uh, I'll, I'll give my take a little based on what the markets look like they're doing according to data. And uh, hopefully the viewers here can, can learn a little bit about how we go about uh, making mock trades and why they're so helpful to improve your portfolio, whether portfolio profits, I should say, whether you're a novice or an expert. So I'm excited to dive into it. Right back at you there, Brian. Perfect. Well, hey, let's without further ado, let's jump right into it here. Uh, we'll get your um, your screen up onto the chart. So what uh, what do we have with uh, in front of us here right now? Yeah, man. So this is the uh, chart that we put out a couple days ago. This was about eight ish hours after the assassination attempt happened. And you can see the immediate impact. Bitcoin here, this is a relatively minor dip where my mouse is, but this was on the nose, like as it unfolded. It happened at about 3.10 p.m. Pacific, 6.10 Eastern, right there. Uh, and the in initial drop was the basically the, the news that he had been shot. Uh, and people weren't sure what that meant, whether he was actually in trouble, if it was life-threatening. And then immediately, you know, as he was putting up his fist and and saying fight and whatever, you know, was what was going on in that clip, that had an immediate positive impact. And you can see how the social dominance of the word Trump just erupted on social media, as you would expect. And Bitcoin shot up uh, in the next two and a half hours, about two and a half percent, which is a lot. In fact, this was the first breach of 60K in over 10 days at that time. Uh, and obviously, as we know now, the momentum hasn't stopped. It's uh, in, the, in that 64 to 65K range, once again, as of the time of this recording. Uh, and I think a lot of people, at least in my opinion, believe that this kind of sparked the entire little rally that happened. And uh, I'm, you know, very interested to see how every piece of Trump slash Biden news that comes out ends up impacting the market. I think as we get closer and closer to the November uh, election and the results, the more anything related to Trump and Biden will impact the markets. I don't, I mean, knock on wood, I, I certainly hope there's no assassination attempt to either candidate, no matter what, who you're rooting for. I, I think that's um, kind of a given, but uh, we're still going to have plenty of other major news. And I highly encourage people to monitor the social social media mentions of Trump or Biden. 
particularly Trump, just because he's perceived to be the more pro crypto candidate right now. So positive news for Trump, you're likely going to see more of this for Bitcoin. And as I mentioned, Trump coin immediate spike, because this is literally a coin that reflects uh, Donald Trump, or at least the meme behind it, whether you are pro Trump or not, right? So the Trump coin is very speculative, even Martin Shkreli and the people behind it admit that. So you're going to see just huge uh, volatility anytime there is news going on around the candidate. And you can see over the last seven days, it's still at 29%. It's come back down to earth a little bit since this post. But uh, I think this was just fascinating to see how things played out in real time here, Traff. A hundred percent. I think that's pretty irrefutable evidence that um, the correlation between the events surrounding Trump's assassination attempt and this break up back over 60,000 is pretty correlated uh, without, you know, much of a, sh a shroud of doubt here. Um, and I think just, that's absolutely fascinating as well that, you know, from a technical analysis standpoint, you do need a significant amount of volume and momentum to break these massive psychological barriers. And something like this that just grabbed the world's attention was just in such dramatic fashion was able to do that. That's uh, absolutely fascinating here. And with the Trump coin as well, that's m massive. That that is a huge spike, sixty three percent in. I'm not sure what the time frame is on this chart. I can't 50 quite. Fifteen minutes. Tell. Yeah. Fifteen. Fifteen minutes. Wow. Five zero. So, yeah. Five zero. Okay. Uh, within very little time is is absolutely wild to see here. Um, I'm curious. Do you have any any data on um, like whale transactions or or what sort of transactions went in behind this move? Yeah. Great question. So we can look at. We can look at whale performance, so how they're actually accumulating or dumping at any given time. And we were actually leading up to that Trump uh, event, seeing the whales and sharks dumping a little bit. Nothing abnormal, right? We've seen this happen in the past, but even these little dips in whale holdings can end up leading to tops for the markets. So there was a little bit of worry here after we had already dipped, these green bars are Bitcoin's daily close price. So we had already dipped around July 5th and 6th year, bottomed out on the 6th. It was kind of, you know, chopping a little for the next couple of days. And then on the 9th and 10th, they were actually dumping. And that was a big concern. You don't want to see whales dumping after the dip had already happened. Mm. But uh, by July 11th, they had started to turn around and are now back to what appears to be rapid accumulation. Um, the axis is kind of zoomed in. That's why you see this off the axis here. But I, I wanted to make sure it was no, like noticeable how much they're continuing to rise over time. And this is an all-time high. They're holding 16.17 million Bitcoin. So wow. I, I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, the Trump news is what caused them to accumulate it, more just validated that they're they're planning to continue ac accumulating and um who knows how history would have changed if um you know an inch in that bullet had had been uh, of a different trajectory but because it went the way it did it's just back to business as usual for whales it appears that's wild to consider the alternative in uh, you know, um, parallel universes here. Uh, and just to, just to clarify, Brian, this this bright green line here that is uh, whales holding between ten and infinity bitcoins. Did I read that right? Ten and up, yeah. Any wallet that's at least ten coins uh, in gotcha. size, they're included. So that obviously includes yeah. not just the whales, but those mid to high end sharks. You know, ten is the very minimum, so that would be the equivalent of about. Uh, $650,000, which sounds pretty massive to many of us, but uh, they're, collectively, those 650 k dollar plus wallets have a massive uh, impact on where markets move ne next, depending on whether they decide to accumulate or dump together on any given day. Incredible. And just the fact that the overall trajectory has been um, a very valid uptrend 
um, since, you know, really the start of this accumulation, even beforehand um, on Bitcoin is extremely bullish and extremely encouraging in my in my perspective here as well. Yeah. Perfect. I think there's Excellent. a very good argument for that. And I, I don't think there are many metrics better than uh, simply taking a quick glance any given day on what the 10 plus wallets are doing. So I highly encourage it. Excellent. Um, no, perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. And another thing to keep an eye on is the MVRV, uh, which is maybe a, another top three metric, in my opinion. And we've seen that with Bitcoin, uh, jumping the way it has, going up about 13-ish percent since Saturday, uh, the 30-day average returns have returned to profit, which sounds good, but you actually don't want to see that. You'd prefer to see average trading returns well below seawater uh, because it indicates that you would be buying into others' pain. Uh, all MVRVs, regardless of time frame, spend about an equal amount of time above or below zero at any given time. For literally the past year, the 365-day MVRV showed long-term traders were in profit, which makes sense. Bitcoin has had a very, very good run, uh, especially since October, right? Because uh, we were back, we were like 26, 25K in early October. Uh, give or take a few weeks if i have it right and obviously we've we almost 3x since that point we're maybe two and a half x now uh and up until right here where you can see the teal line going below zero we had just seen but profit uh and once we saw it go below that was an indication that we had seen a bottom and that was july 5th regardless of the trump news like there was already an argument that we had seen a bottom back on July 5th or so. And since that time, when we saw the 30-day and 365-day MVRV well below zero, prices have skyrocketed. Um, and let me see if I can get this part two. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, like I said, I think Bitcoin has gone up roughly 12 to 13% since that time. So it's clearly been a nice week and a half or so but now the question is will we continue and according to mvrvs now there's a little bit of risk if you want to keep buying right new traders want to buy when you see a bunch of green candles and you see there's already some momentum here but the veteran traders who've been around the block for years they tend to take profit as we see these big green candles and then buy, buy back in after people are panicking from the red candles. Fascinating here. Um, I, so based on your on your data and your um, your information here, the 365 day and the 30 day um, MVRVs are are the two um, most um, beneficial to to kind of ascertain where the market is and, and where the tops and bottoms might be. Yeah, I'd say there's a good argument that they're nice kind of safe uh, representations of what long and short term traders are doing. If you wanted to get more granular, you can say, I want to look at six months, or you could even say, I want to look at five year average trading returns. It all depends on your own trading strategy, whether you're swing trading, you know, where the 30 day might be a little more useful to you, or if you're more of a hodler and you only make a, a couple big buys or sells every couple months, uh, that's where you kind of want to focus in on that same time frame of your own portfolio strategy, if that makes sense. A hundred percent. And I feel like we're very close to a perfect segue to uh, the next part of our conversation here. But before we dive into actually trying to find some good trade ideas together, uh, are there any other metrics that you were hoping that we could take a look at here for um, the current market change? Um, Let's see if there's one more down here. Uh, funding rate is normal, so nothing going on there. I'd be very interested if we started to see some shorting coming in or mm. super longing, but it's it, people are kind of very unsure at the moment. We'll leave it at that. It, it seems like at this level, the bulls and bears are really kind of in that quiet mode where they're not sure where we're going to go next. But I will say... If we go down to weighted sentiment, mm. there's still 
appears to be a bullish bias, uh, yeah, a bearish bias here, I should say, where the level of positive versus negative comments is still showing a more bearish sentiment than usual. Um, we wow. saw like a, a short spike over the weekend where people were getting a little euphoric. But looking at the weekly time frame, each of these little bars here represents one week. And anything below zero means there's more bearish sentiment than usual or just a lack of conversation compared to usual. So even with all the, you know, the hype around this mild bounce, mid-sized bounce, whatever you want to call it, it's not bringing, you know, all of those novice traders and FOMOers out of the woodwork again to start talking about Bitcoin. So that, that actually would be considered a good thing. You want to have the crowd continuing to ignore big price booms uh, until, you know, they really start to come back and then you get a euphoria spike like this right here. And that would be where you want to exit. This was the week right up to the all time high. So the data clearly showed profit taking might be a, a strong choice here or even right here on this rebound. So right now it's just a lot of bearishness and that's a good thing. Now this, this particular metric here never fails to blow my mind how closely correlated these spikes in weighted sentiment uh, is to tops and bottoms. Like it's even uh, back in uh, May 24th, just before that day, it looks like you can see how sentiment just popped its head over top of the, uh, the baseline level here. And that perfectly indicated another local top. Um, so yeah. this is definitely an important one that I will, will certainly keep my eyes on. And just to kind of um, summarize the metrics that we've taken a look at, uh, weighted sentiment is looking more on the bullish side. Yep. Whale wallets also looking a little bit more on the bullish side. Yep. MVRV is a little bit of a, a trouble signal. That one could be less bullish, a little on the bear side. Short term. Side. Yeah, short on the short term, term, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of halt for a few days or a slight turnaround to get the crowd nervous again and then the whale wallet accumulation might start to really push us toward you know 100%. that 60, 68 70k level something like that just a and wild prediction we'll find out perfect and i know from my recent uh technical analysis on the bitcoin chart itself the uh the area where we are right now price wise um, doesn't look like a very sustainable place to stay. So I would also imagine that a um, bit of a retracement, a little bit of sideways trading in the near future um, wouldn't be a surprise to me. That is for sure. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the last one was that we looked at was the uh, funding rates, which are neutral. Um, exactly. So no indications of any local tops or bottoms, just uh, smooth sailing as it were. Yeah, it appears so. We had maybe a very small couple of short spikes. That's what these tiny red bars are. Uh, but you want to see like tons and tons of them to really justify that we're in a fear market where everyone is is jumping out at a loss and saying, I don't want to lose any more. Get me out of here. No more crypto for me. And that tends to be where you see the big bounces occur and great buy opportunities. But as of now, flat, kind of boring. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent, Brian. Well, hey, I really appreciate you bringing that to us today. Uh, I certainly feel a little bit more informed, a little bit more reassured of, of where we are and what we might be able to expect in the near future.